Uh, and, and that's why I'm excited uh, to be here again, uh, and in a very brief moment to sit back down, uh, so that I can once again experience the, the diverse, the clever, the thoughtful, and intriguing ways that many of you who are represented in this great magazine uh, have decided to share your imagination with us. Uh, and, as, and as James said uh, as well, it's a reflection of the College of Marin um, and the greatness of this place, and the greatness of this place is defined by the people here. And I want to thank you all for being at the college and contributing to it uh, in all of the ways that you, you do, including in particular today, um, the looking class. So thank you all very much. Why do you hate me so? 
Some still believe that I am the great trickster, the furry Prometheus of the Emeritus. At the very least, you can see that I just need to survive. Though perhaps, if you were smaller and I were larger, I would call all my friends, and we would feast on you together, singing to a sliver of a coyote moon.
and struggles to stay alive. To this end, the outer warmth of the stove works in concert with the inner warmth given by a few drops of whiskey suckled from the man's handkerchief. It is a paradox that puzzles the boy, for the lamb will be saved today only to be led to its slaughter before reaching the building.
greasy hands caress the metal spokes, making the wheel spin, whirring and clicking. A wrench never hurt anyone's feelings. The smell of every garage from Hamburg to Adelaide, greasy washers, bolts, and screws of every size, covered in oil, more pervasive than lust or cheap perfume.
Planting a negative seed of thought like that could have ter terrible consequences. It's completely irresponsible for her, he said in the room. His reaction caught her off guard. Well, I, I just thought it was so long in my face that it was funny. Obviously, she's a total fraud. I just wanted my 10 bucks. I'm sorry I told you that. You should be, he said as he turned and walked away. Wait, what are you doing? She snapped. He stopped and turned back to her. Who knows? Maybe you believe it just a little, enough to, stick to say it and put it out there. I would never say such a thing to you, even jokingly. Is there something you're trying to tell me, Jane? Heck, I thought we'd try to, to you know, we took this trip to try and get closer, but maybe this is why. I just find it disturbing, he said, that whatever the reason. Jesus, Harold, I'm sorry. I thought you would appreciate the absurdity and we'd have a good laugh. Come on, honey, lighten up. Let's go and find some place we can talk and get out of this heat. I think it's getting to both of us. She had her hand around his arm and she pulled him gently toward her. His chin dropped to his chest for a moment and he stood firm. Then after a minute, he said, sure, fine. The two of them walked back to their truck, but neither said anything more about it. They never found a place to talk. Some years later, on a humid summer afternoon, sitting on her front porch with her third husband, she found herself remembering that day. She looked at the lines running down her palm. They were deeper now. She glanced at Tom in the chair next to hers and wondered if she should tell him. She gave him her hand, palm side up. Pointing to the longest line, she said, a fortune teller once told me that these three lines represent my three marriages. This is ours. Lucky for me, there isn't a fourth, he said with a grin. He put his palm over hers and brought her hand to his lips. Until luck burns out there. Luke or 
cartoon vision of heaven with a harp and a halo for my dad. No, he'd be working in the garden. So on page 13, we have the gardening in the afterlife. On the other side of the universe, you're there, pulling the earth, planting tomatoes. This is good rich loam here, you say, not like that concrete Berkeley soil. Daffodils are already springing up on the terrace above you, and tulips and crocuses. Those harbingers of spring, you call them, that stuck their heads up in your childhood out of a foot of Nebraska snow. You pause, take off your hat, wipe your brow, Good to see you, you say to me. I've got more work to do here. Maybe zucchini, butternut squash, definitely more tomatoes. I like the champion variety. Glad you're doing well, he says. He said, the sun pauses atop the hills. Bird song is rife in the air. I look back, and you are bent again, turning over the sun. The usual um, cliche sayings apply here, which is this was really hard. Judging is so hard. We did this blind. We did not know who wrote what. We went through all of the accepted submissions, poured over them, read them, reread them, talked about them, enjoyed them first and foremost, and then finally had to make some choices, which was hard. But um, we did. So we're going to start, we're doing prizes for both poetry and fiction. Um, we'll start with poetry. And for third place, we would like to award third place to um, Mark Alperin. Mm -hmm. For the first hour. Because it, it was a tricky thing for the committee 
the, the literary club themselves, uh, sifting through a bunch of them. You know? So there were a lot of quality ones that maybe didn't get in, but they also had a time and a, and a space restriction thing. So I'd like to thank everybody that submitted and everybody who is here. Uh, and uh, I think we'd like to hear the prize winning call. Before you read it, I'd also like to mention the gorgeous art, which I haven't seen until today. It is absolutely stunning, the photographs and the, and the drawings. So that wasn't even part of this, but of the contest. But thank you for those submissions as well. They're amazing.